an emotionally abusive man listens to your trauma. Then he turns it back on you in a way that strips away all that fake strong woman empowerment shit you talk about. Chapter 3. Your pussy should cost more than a few hours of conversation. We as males don't pay attention to much, but we notice that women let us get away with not texting, not going on real dates, and I'm so busy with work excuses. The more a woman allows us to pick her up and put her down, the more power we have over her. A woman that has other options won't put up with what women with no options will. A woman that sees us as a catch can play hard to get, but by testing her through a series of games, we can see if she's thirsty or not. This is the mindset we men walk around with and why we can pretend not to care. It's all a game, or better yet, a bitch check to break women down. I promote the concept of read yourself, but so many women can't. Thus, they become slaves to men who can sniff out their damage. I remember one girl telling me how her situationship guy, a.k.a. friend with benefits, shitted on her about not having a car, as if not driving meant that she was a loser. She ranted about it to me, then followed up a week later with, So I fucked him, and afterwards he started downing me about being my age and still living with my parents. Wait, wait, wait. A man calls you a bum bitch, and to prove him wrong, you go and ride him like the car you can't afford? This shit would be funny if it weren't so tragic. There are women so insecure and self-loathing that they react to verbal abuse like a finger rubbing against their clit. Yes, tell me how I'm pathetic and work a low-paying job. I'm about to come so hard. A woman with confidence and self-esteem would delete that guy's number the moment he came at her neck with non-constructive criticism. But weak bitches long to prove themselves worthy. I repeat for the millionth time, you have to know your flaws instead of pretending that it doesn't bother you, because an intelligent man will take you on one date and break your weak ass down in all the areas where you pretend to be strong at in order to get you to fall in line. You have a big nose, so he's going to show you a picture of the last chick he was with that's two times as pretty as you. You don't have much money. He's going to brag about his career and guilt you about not being on his level. You ran your mouth about how your last boyfriend cheated on you. He's going to wait until you act up and say, I see why guys cheat on you. You have a child. He's going to remind you that nobody wants a used bitch with an already made family. By the time he's done defecating on your soul, you'll be begging him to fuck you and give you his approval. It's game. He's playing Lee Harvey Oswald with your self-esteem and you're a sitting duck because you aren't strong enough to love yourself. Yes, you are flawed. Yes, you have made mistakes, but you don't need to be admonished by any man. Stop dressing in cardboard and thinking that shit is armor. Be honest about your shortcomings and fix them instead of waiting for a man to come and exploit them. Let's break down how to defend your ears from a man that wants to take advantage of your Disney princess fantasy. The first step is a continuation of what was written above. You must watch what you give away to a man you're just getting to know. Men know women like to talk about themselves, so what do men do? Let them talk and talk and talk. When she comes up for air and asks him a question, his only response is to swing it back to her again, because we as men don't want to open up. We just want to fuck and keep it moving. Why do you like to talk so much? Because you feel as if you don't get to express yourself normally. No one wants to hear you out, and you're frustrated, so the moment someone asks you about you, your ego explodes. 
You just spray verbal diarrhea in the ear of a man who doesn't say a word, but for real? In return, you bond fast, and he gets the pussy within a few weeks under the pretense of, it felt like I've known him forever. No, Basica, you haven't known him forever. You were just talking forever and got so caught up in the excitement that you forgot that your pussy should cost more than a few hours of conversation. I knew he was lying. I'm not dumb. You purposefully fell for game that you knew was game? What the fuck does that make you then, a genius? Too many women worry about what's being said and ignore what's being done. A manipulative man is better at propaganda than Hitler. And as a result, a generation of women have been trained to get open off of texting as opposed to flowers. For example, I had a girl email me about my book, Ho Tactics, after she used it on her boyfriend. Using the psychology in those pages, she was finally able to get her man to treat her to a fancy date. In this email, she said being taken out to an expensive restaurant made her feel wrong. This was a woman so used to being courted like a basic bitch that it felt dirty to be taken out and treated. That's a direct result of men bonding with women based on words, not actions. Today's men don't have to take girls on dates. They don't have to be consistent with their communication. They don't have to be romantic. All they have to do is listen to her life story, spot her holes, tell a girl his future plans and how she's a part of them, and watch as the girl buys in. The better a man looks, the sweeter his lies taste. Be honest. Hearing that good-looking loser promise you the world feels better than getting your ass ate. Telling a woman what he is going to do for her is easier than doing it, and it gets a man the same results. Growing up, most of you heard family or friends who played the lottery say, when I hit this number, I'm going to buy a car like this, and I'll get you one like that. Hopeless people love to mentally escape, and hopeless romantics are no exception. Dreaming becomes dangerous when you're doing it with your eyes open. Ladies, you want the fantasy. He knows you want the fantasy. So why are you getting gassed when guys tell you how special you are, how you two would make pretty kids, or how you're the type he would marry? Morning emojis aren't proof that he loves you. Wanting to come in you isn't a down payment on an engagement ring. You have a fetish for fantasy. And even if you roll your eyes and don't believe him at first, you still hear him out. Which means you are flawed. He sees this crack in your armor and will use it to get what he wants, no matter how much you claim to be smarter than him. After enough talk, you will buy into the lie because that lie is better than your lonely reality. When you see girls making comments on social media about no good men, and you find yourself constantly agreeing with them, it's because you're both common in your mindset. The same way she got played, you get played. Why is that? Because even a thousand miles apart, you do the same basic shit and fall for the same basic game. You pride yourself on being something out of the ordinary, but your personality is about as exotic as having blue eyes in Finland. A unique woman isn't sitting in the same boat with basic bitches, swapping war stories about the struggle. A special woman can't relate with, yep, that's how men do you, girl. Because men don't pull that bullshit on special women. The more you advance mentally, the less in common you have with the Tina typicals of the world. The more you keep it real with yourself, the less you have in common with the bitter basicas of the world. The more you understand yourself, the more you will be able to recognize which men are worth your time and which men are dick just trying to waste your time. The path to being generic is easy. 
Just keep pretending you're hot shit and that all your bad breaks are the results of others. The path to being great is hard because it forces you to tear down the safety net of your little girl ego, confront the ugly side of your personality, and address the traumatic side of your past. Stop lying. Stop waiting. Stop running. Stop being content with me.